It appears that not even a day can go by without something prophetic showing up in the news. And after having just reported to you and piecing together that article about the blue and white party saying that they are going to have a disengagement like Gush Katif in Judea and Samaria and that it will be a time of great tribulation, we know that's <laughs> the second half of the seven years of the tribulation, that it's got to be near the start of the seven years and we know that the peace plan is going to be brought forth probably before the Israeli elections March 2nd before that and possibly as soon as possible so here we go again in breaking Israel news we have this story about Turkey sending troops to Libya to form another Ottoman Caliphate to take over the world with their Islamic rhetoric. Before reading that article, I wanted to say that the Libyans will follow after the heels of the Antichrist, and it's written in Daniel 11. I'm going to start in verse 42. He will extend his power over many countries, and not even the land of Egypt will escape. He will gain control of the treasures of gold and silver, and over all the riches of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Cushites will also submit to him. The Cushites being the Ethiopians, which I believe is supposed to be modern-day Sudan. But as I stated yesterday when I talked about how the blue and white party plan is to remove the Jewish communities out of Judea and Samaria. Then we have this article today on Breaking Israel News that is by Adam Eliahu Berkowitz. That was written yesterday, January 21st. Turkey deploys 2,000 troops to Libya to reestablish the Muslim Caliphate with Jerusalem as capital. It never was their capital. Ever. And then they quote Ezekiel 38, verse 2. O mortal, turn your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. Prophesy against him. So considering what it says about that the Libyans will follow after the heels of the Antichrist, it says in this article, a new military incursion into Libya is part of a long-awaited dream by the Turkish president to return the Ottoman Caliphate, a global Islamic rule that subjugated Jews and Christians for six centuries. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported on Monday that Turkish-backed Syrian mercenaries have begun arriving in Libya. Approximately 2,400 troops are already in Tripoli, while another 1,700 are currently undergoing training in Turkey. Activists informed the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, the SOHR, that Turkey intends to send a total of 6,000 troops to Libya. Turkey is backing the Tripoli-based Government of National Accord, the GNA, in its fight against the eastern-based Libyan National Army led by General Khalifa Haftar and backed by Russia. The GNA is supported by Egypt and Saudi Arabia. The GNA also receives air support from the United Arab Emirates. So right there you have Egypt being involved in Libya exactly what it said in Daniel chapter 11 about the Antichrist. Until now, the role of the Turkish military has been limited to 35 military personnel involved solely in training and advisory roles. The new Syrian troops are mercenaries hired from rebel groups opposing Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The Turkish government will pay each soldier a monthly stipend of $2,000 far more than the fifty dollars they earned to fight back home in Syria. The Syrian troops are also fighting against the Kurds in Libya. Turkish intervention is a manifestation of Turkish president his aspirations to establish himself as the leader of a global Islamic nation. 
The SOHR reported that a commander of the Turkish-backed Syrian troops en route to Libya announced as their battle cry, We will present our souls for the Ottoman Caliphate. Yeah, they will. They're going to lose their souls, which are going to perish in hell. The Ottoman Caliphate, known in the West as the Ottoman or Turkish Empire, was founded in the 13th century and eventually controlled much of the Southeast, Europe, Western Asia, and North Africa. This control lasted for several hundred years and only truly ended after World War I, when the empire was partitioned by the Allied powers and the 101st and final Caliph, Sultan Abdulmasid II, was deposed and expelled. It should be noted that after his expulsion from Turkey, Sultan Abdulmasid II was in close correspondence with the Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin el Husseini, the founder of Palestinian nationalism, who later became a close friend of Adolf Hitler and an advocate of the Holocaust. In fact, he actually suggested many of the tortures in the Holocaust. So they're responsible for quite a bit of evil that God's going to come and judge. The Ottoman Empire was a Sunni caliphate which exerted a hegemonic power of Muslim control over the non-Muslim populations, most notably a Christian Catholic majority. In accordance with the Muslim Dhimmi system, Christians were guaranteed limited freedoms such as the right to worship. They were forbidden to carry weapons or ride on horseback. So see, it's the Muslims that are going to come in like a cloud, not Christians on horseback. Which nobody thought it was the Christians, but I'm just saying this proves that it's the Muslims that are going to invade like a cloud. They were forbidden to carry weapons or ride on horseback. Their houses could not overlook those of Muslims in addition to other legal limitations. Many Christians and Jews converted in order to secure full status in society. What a huge mistake that they took the number of the mark of the beast, the number of his name. Before his election, Turkish political analysts feared that candidate um, the Turkish president's rise to power was fueled by his aspirations and those of his supporters to return Turkey to its former glory at the head of the Muslim world. His term in office confirmed these fears in the wake of a failed attempt by a coup by a faction in the army in 2016. The president of Turkey mobilized the military against the populace and jailed hundreds of dissidents. But the Turkish president's caliphate aspirations extend beyond the borders of Turkey and target Israel, and most specifically Jerusalem. At a summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the OIC, in Istanbul last year, the Turkish president called on all of the 57 Muslim member nations to join together against Israel to avenge the deaths of Palestinians killed while charging the southern border of Gaza. In 2015, the Turkish president gave a speech commemorating 562 years since the Turks captured Constantinople, now known as Istanbul, from European Christians, in which he called for the Muslim conquest of Jerusalem. Conquest is Mecca. Conquest is Saladin. It's to hoist the Islamic flag over Jerusalem again. Conquest is the heritage of Mehmed II. And conquest means forcing Turkey back on its feet, Erdogan said in his speech in Istanbul. Well, you know, you didn't win then and you're not going to win in the future. Don't you know that God had you defeated already? And he's going to come again and smite you with the sword of his mouth. The Turkish president's support of the Palestinians was returned in kind in a Muslim gathering on the Temple Mount earlier this month commemorating the conquest of Constantinople in 1453 CE. Nidhal Abu Ibrahim Saim, a Palestinian preacher, addressed a crowd of approximately 7,000. 
As reported by the Middle East Media Research Institute, Siam told the crowd that three prophecies would soon be fulfilled. A rightfully guided caliphate will be established, that Jerusalem will be liberated and established as its capital, and that Islam will throw its neighbors to the ground, thereby achieving world domination. The gathering was organized by Hizb ut Tahrir, an international pan-Islamist whose political organization dedicated to establishing a global caliphate. Founded in Jerusalem in 1953, the organization is banned in many countries. The Turkish president has also been suspected of aiding Hamas, allowing the terrorist organization to operate out of Turkey. The terrorist group is also reportedly in contact with the Tur Turkish intelligence agency. The key to the Turkish incursion into Libya and the hidden motivation is actually quite straightforward. Two months ago, Turkey signed a maritime borders deal that gave Turkey a claim to parts of the eastern Mediterranean. In addition to its strategic military importance, the eastern Mediterranean has huge natural gas deposits. Turkey's entrance into the eastern Mediterranean puts it into close proximity with Israel and its offshore natural gas facilities. So here comes the invasion of Gog and Magog, right? <laughs> Dr. Mordecai Kadar, a senior lecturer in the Department of Arabic at Bar Ilan University, noted that the president's of Turkey's interest in Libya is really quite simple. The whole thing is about natural gas. <laughs> Dr. Kedar said, The agreement between Turkey and Libya bypassed Syria, Lebanon, Israel, and Egypt. They related to the entire Mediterranean and the enormous natural gas deposits as if they belonged only to Libya and Turkey. So there's your Daniel fulfillment of prophecy. This could bring Israel into direct conflict with Turkey, but since Israel is supplying vital gas to Europe, this also brings Turkey into conflict with Europe. In order to make sure that the Libyan government stays and Turkey's gas interests in the Mediterranean stay secure, Turkey is ramping up the hostilities in Libya in favor of the GNA. Dr. Kadar emphasized that Turkey's interest in Libyan hostilities is in essence, but not exclusively financially motivated. But religion is big business, he added. Establishing a caliphate is certainly a big part of the Turkish president's agenda, but to do that he needs money and power. Taking over the gas in the Mediterranean will give him that. Wow going to come in to Israel like a cloud on horses because <laughs> we know it's the Muslims that are riding the horses this aspect of the Libyan conflict concerning natural gas in the Mediterranean is of grave concern to international leaders including US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo Russian President Vladimir Putin Turkish President Erdogan French President Emmanuel Macron Italian Premier Giuseppe Conti and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, all of whom gathered in Berlin on Sunday to discuss the issue. Also in attendance were UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez, along with senior representatives of the European Union, the African Union, and the Arab League. Now after reading that in the news, let's go to the Ezekiel 38 prophecy again, and let's read from Verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen. That's the Muslims. All splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them. 
all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all its troops, the house of Tugarma from the far north and all its troops, and the peoples who are with you. I will give you to birds of prey of every sort. So, see, they're going to be part of that supper, not the uh, wedding supper of the lamb, but they're going to be the food for the fowls of the air. Just as I said in my last video about how they're going to be the food for the birds because they're going to have a disengagement of the Jews in Judea and Samaria in the future during the Great Tribulation. And God goes on to say, Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. And thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan you will say I will go up against a land of unwalled villages I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take plunder and to take booty to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods and who dwell in the midst of the land Sheba Didan the merchants of Tarshish and all their young lions will say to you have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your armies to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, and to take away livestock and goods, to take away great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel dwells safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company with a mighty army. That's Islam. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I'm hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. This says the Lord God. Are you he of whom I have spoken in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them? And it will come to pass at the same time when Gog comes against Against the land of Israel says the Lord God that my fury will show in my face for in my jealousy in the fire of my wrath I have spoken now the wrath is the time of the great tribulation that wrath of God Surely in that day there shall be great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth, shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog through all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother. And I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him. Flooding rain, great hailstones of a hundred pounds each. <laughs> fire and brimstone thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself in other words he's saying I am the one true God that created the universe not the fake false crescent moon God that you follow that Satan the deceiver I will magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations then shall they know that I am the Lord and that is out of the mouth of God himself. Now I was telling you in my last video about if they have this disengagement of the Jews that live in Judea and Samaria that everyone's giving them a warning you better get out now before the great tribulation comes upon the land.
You better prepare right now. And what if these people come in like a cloud at that time and God pours out his fury at that time and his wrath, but the church will not be here because we will already be taken up in the rapture and will come back with the Lord as members of his heavenly army on white horses and the Lord's going to defeat this menace and put an end to the Antichrist. So all of these things converging daily in the news is so astonishing and this is just one more aspect of it. So I just <laughs> wanted to share this with you right away and tell you that this is what's forming right now and what they're planning to do is come in on horses and of course like I said it the Christians were not allowed to be riding on the horses in a military campaign it's the Muslims dominating and being overbearing and an evil plan God says will come into their mind and heart that they will try to fulfill but God is gonna show the strength of his might and they will perish on the mountains of Israel when they try to form this caliphate and do their evil deed invading Israel like a cloud to try to take Jerusalem as their capital it has not worked in the past Jerusalem was never your capital it never will be the capital of the Palestinians or the caliphate or the Ottoman Empire of old it never will be you were defeated God allowed your defeat and he's going to bring it again and that's not my words that's God's words and if you don't heed God's words now well we just know that the prophecy is about to come to pass as soon as you have this evil plan which has already come into your mind and you're setting it up right now so God is on the move and when this comes about his fury is going to show in his face and he's going to stand up and come against you and he's going to fight for his people and show that he's the one true God and that's what he did with Nebuchadnezzar showed him that he was the one true God and for seven years Nebuchadnezzar crawled on the ground like an animal until he acknowledged who the true God was the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for the rest of us. <laughs> wow, daily these things are coming about. Our redemption draws nigh, my friends. Look up. Look up. <laughs> I would say with all these things in the works, and we can see them, our redemption draws nigh and the coming and appearing of the Lord is at hand soon as we don't know but if you can see these things happening then you know once again that he is getting ready to appear for those who love him get your heart right with the Lord there's not much time as I've said all of these things coming about just astound me. I couldn't even believe that another prophetic article showed up. I mean, every single day it's been something prophetic lining up, lining up and getting in order for the final seven years, and we could see it with our own eyes in the news. All right, well, this is just one more thing that shows that the Lord is near, even at the door.